semester. You guys excited for classes? Yeah. We're excited. It's good, it's good to be back. You know, we meet in the summer, but it's just it's nice to have everyone back, back in the um, back on campus, back in the union. And we're just we're just really excited for this. And, um, hopefully you guys had a good uh, summer, some, some good vacations, some good relaxing. Um, I know, I, I was thinking about it, for, for me, I, I've had probably more vacations this last summer than, than like, for, for years I can remember. Tara, Tara and I, uh, for, the, for the record, I, my name is Chris, uh, I'm a, a guy on staff here, uh, I have a, a baby mom, beautiful baby, baby mom over here. <laughs> yeah, we're expecting it in October. Um, so. Tara's family actually has a, a lake house down in Tennessee. Um, and it, well, it's a house about five minutes from the lake, and they've got boats and jet skis. And we've gone down there like three or four times this summer, and it's been amazing each time. Um, any, any fishers, fish, fishermen, fisherwomen over here? I hear you. I hear you. I'm serious. I'm with you. Okay, I'm, with you. I'm actually glad. Okay, because I, I I just don't get it. I'm glad we can all agree together. I'm sorry. I just don't get it. Okay, but here's the thing: because Harris family is huge into fishing. They're just, it's just it's what they it makes like half the vacation. It's just such a big deal to them. Um, so this last time, about a couple weeks ago, we were down there in Tennessee, and my father-in-law comes up to me the night before our final day. He's like, "Hey, Chris, you want to go? You want to go fishing? Want to go fishing with me tomorrow?" Like a personal invitation, just me and him. And uh, like a like a respectful person, I'm like. No! <laughs> I'm like, I immediately felt bad. That's just, that's, just a, that's just a terrible, that's just a jerk, right? Who says no to like an invitation like that? Okay, but here's the thing. There's a lot of things that, that, uh, that were not appealing about that. Um, for vacation, I imagine you guys are, are, are agree with me that vacation is when a time you get to sleep in, right? You don't wake up. I mean, they, they get up at 5.30 or sometimes 6 in the morning to go fishing because that's when the fishing's right. So that was, that was not appealing number one. Like, I don't really like, I like to sleep in, right? Okay. And uh, the second thing is, uh, thing is that I am a bad at fishing. So <laughs> when I go, I just sit there and I don't catch anything. So typically it's not that, ever that fun for me. And then add another level, number three, where my father-in-law has been fishing since he was old enough to walk. So I know that I'm going to go in God with him and he's going to be reeling him in. I'm just going to be sitting there like, this is great. This is very good. <laughs> But I said yes, and, and it, was, it, was, it was fun. So we, we get out there on the lake, and um, he, he, you know, he starts, you know, he has the first, first catch. And I'm like, oh, yeah, great, that's cool, it's, it's exciting. For him, it's just like he's doing that thousand times. And he has another one. I'm like, oh, cool, wow, you're going to roll. And the third one, I'm like, another one. <laughs> and the fourth one comes, and like, and then the fifth, I'm like, I hate this. I want to go home. I don't want to go home. Because it's just... It's just not as enjoyable. And he gets six in a row, all right? Six in a row. And then finally, and, he, and he's giving me pointers. He's like, hey, you're doing this. I'm learning all sorts of things. Apparently, if you're a real, like, if you really go fishing, you don't even use a bobber. You just, you jig, jigging, okay, I guess is the name. <laughs> you kind of throw it out there, and you reel it in, you count to 10, you reel it in. All these things completely new. He's, but he's giving me these tips, and finally, I get my first catch. And I was so good, I actually caught two things that <laughs> I caught the fish and then also the stationary buoy that we use for measuring where all the fish are. And so I'm really at it and the buoy's coming in and I'm like, dang it. I just, I just caught the buoy, this is really embarrassing. <laughs> and, but we get to the top and there's a fish pop popping around. It's like all tied up in the rope with the buoy and I'm like, what do I do? And I'm like, hit me with the boat! And so I it over and it lands in the boat and wait, now he helps me hook it off and then, uh, and then I get two more. Uh, two more rounds, I get three, so this total score was 6-3, not that you know, uh, But it was just, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was an adventure. You know? And, and the, reason, the reason why I bring up the story, okay, the reason I bring it up is because looking back, I'm so thankful that I took that opportunity and went outside of my comfort zone because otherwise I would have never had that experience. I would have completely missed out. Because here's the other thing, okay? Uh, when you're sitting out on the lake, which is two guys in a boat, you have some heart-to-hearts, right? So we're sitting there where my father-in-law and I are just talking about real stuff and we just don't get a chance to. And we're talking. And then, you know, we get to bond over the, the, the fishing. He, he gets to bond because he feels like he's kind of like a father kind of teaching me and I'm learning, I'm getting excited. And then and we catch fish and we're all, you know, it's, it's, it's just rolling. And then he gets to tease me for the rest of the vacation. And a loving tease. I'm, like, I'm, I'm just glad that we're at that point. It's like, oh. Chris caught the movie three times. <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> he gets to tease me, like, you guys, you know what I mean? Like, we're in the, you know, because we're around the family, and, he, and he's teasing me. I know that's because I'm just, I'm, I'm slowly becoming a part of the family just more and more. You know, and I, when I look back, I realize, like, man, I'm so glad I said yes to get up at 5.30 in the morning and do something I was not excited to do, because now looking back, I see the value. I see what, what the experience that I was able to gain. And because I, you know, because I said yes, now I have those memories and I have that bonding and that, and that experience with my father that I would never have otherwise. Okay, so, so I, I really thought you know, it makes sense you know, as we go through, as we continue, but uh, this, this, for this next several uh, weeks at New Life OSU, we're gonna be going through the sermon series called Encounter. Encountering God, Encounter God. Uh, what, we're, what would that mean, okay, is what we're gonna go through in the New Testament and look at uh, times in the Bible where human beings, just like you, you know, just like me, that had a direct encounter with Jesus Christ. Okay, really quickly, there's a few things that New Life OSU feels very passionate about. And I just want to lay that out the very first week, okay? We love Jesus. We believe, our, our, our vision, our mission, uh, we believe that Jesus Christ is the source of all life. That's what we believe. That's why we're here. That's why we're in this room this morning. That's why we're seeing those words. That's why we get out and chalk, you know, for those of you guys see. We, we believe that Jesus Christ is the source of all life, and that means two things. One, biological life. I mean that Jesus Christ actually gives us breath. It makes us be alive only through him. He's the creator of the universe as well. But also, the, 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 even the more thing we want to stress is, is thrive. You got mind, maybe you saw that word around uh, campus yesterday. But thrive. Not just biological life, but through Jesus Christ we are given life where we can, we're not just surviving, we're not just getting through, but we're actually thriving. There's a difference, right? We believe that Jesus Christ is the source of all that. We also heavily believe in, in, in missions. We believe that we want to send our body out to the world and, and spread the good news of, of the gospel. Uh, we also believe in community. You know, th this room, I promise, if you get to know the people in this room, you're going to find a home. And you're going to find brothers and sisters that care about you and want to be invested in your life. A, a, a community of people. That's just what, that's what, there's a few things that we're passionate about. So we're going to talk about encountering God for the next several weeks. And the first thing we're going to talk about is um, one of the early in Jesus' ministry uh, where he uh, is, is first interacting with Peter. So if you guys are familiar, Simon Peter um, is, is a huge uh, pillar in the early church. And what we're going to look at is a small uh, passage where, where Christ first calls him uh, to, to, to follow him, to serve him. Um, so let's read the passage really quick. Um, and also, I forgot I have, a, I have a little picture of cleaning fish. I guess it's going to go up there. <laughs> I forgot to mention it, but another thing I learned. There's my father-in-law. There's me. I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, you know, basically slicing off many of the fish. It's a dry, dry thing. Um, let's, so let's read the passage really quick. Luke 5, 1 through 11. So I'll be up here, or you can pull up your Bibles. Um, Luke. 5, 1 through 11. On one occasion, while a crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, a.k.a. Gal, lake of Gal. And he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, a.k.a. Peter, Simon Peter, same, same guy, he asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the Bible, or taught the people from the boat. And when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we've toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down these nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and they filled both the boats so that they began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. So that's going to be our passage this morning. I'm going to pray, and uh, we'll, we'll dive in. Um, Heavenly Father, God, we, we ask that you would speak to us uh, this morning. God, we ask that you would reveal truth. Uh, from your word. God, I ask that you would just guide my words that I would not speak 
Hanley that you do not approve of, for example, that is not truth. Uh, Father, we ask that uh, we would commune with you today, God, that we would meet with you, that we would see you and encounter you this morning, God, and that we would just praise you for your faithfulness in Jesus' name. All right. All right. So just, just be thinking about those times. Have you, have you had uh, an op- a chance in your life like where you took that step, when you, when you, you know, did something that was out of your comfort zone, and then you look back and you're like, yeah, I'm sure I did that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, so um, in your bulletin, bulletin um, the, we're, going to, we're just going to go dive in right to the first point. Okay, what is the first thing, as I study about what do I, what do I think, the first thing that usually happens when you encounter Jesus Christ? First thing is it typically involves a challenge. So you guys can write that down. An encounter with Jesus typically involves a challenge. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, Jesus Christ is God himself. Jesus Christ was Emmanuel. He was God with us. He came into the world as God and lived among us in the flesh. So what that means is he has a pretty unfair advantage of seeing straight into our hearts when he speaks to us. Okay, so as I promise, as you read through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you, and you read through the story of what Jesus did while he was here, you're going to see some patterns. You're going to see when he came in direct contact with a human, he challenged them in a good, helpful, edifying way. And that challenge came from his unique ability to pierce straight into the heart and see a root issue. He, could, he had, had supernatural discernment, like, like the, the, the woman on the well, the woman at the well, if you're familiar with that story. You know, he speaks straight to the root issue. And he challenges her. He's like, you are committing adultery. And she knows that that's immediately true. He says, go, you know, sin no more. What about the the rich young ruler that comes? There's a guy that came to Jesus and he says, Jesus, I'm doing all these things right. Look at all these, look at my rap sheet. And Jesus, instead of acknowledging those things that that were good things, he, he chooses to challenge the one point in his life that he was not letting go. He saw straight to it. And it's like, it's like no matter where you are with God, you could be a disciple or you could be someone who had never met and had no idea or no concern who Christ was. Jesus was constantly challenging him into the next step, you know, like a great, like maybe you're here, it's like I, have no, I, don't, I don't even care who Jesus is. He's going he's gonna to meet that person and challenge them where, they are, where they're at, give them the next step. Or you might have the, the, the Peters, the, the Pauls, the, the, you know, the Johns. The, uh, the, the, the Doubting Thomases, those, those people, he's going to meet them where they're at and challenge them to their next step of faith. And that, this is just what he did. And in this passage, what, what, that, um, what we see is in verse 4. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. What Jesus is doing is he is challenging Peter at this moment. He's testing him. He's giving him a, a, a little challenge to see if Peter is going to, to follow him. Is he going to listen? It's not, it's, not about, it's, it's not about fish, right? It's not about the nets. He's not trying to help Peter um, have, a, have a good catch so he can provide for his family that night. He's, he's not concerned about that. What is happening is Jesus Christ is, is, is proposing a challenge to Peter. Uh, Peter has the opportunity to, to just ignore him. To go another way, to, to make an excuse, or to, to listen and to follow. And this is early in their relationship. It, 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 this, this reminds me of like, to me it's kind of like a, a father and his toddler in a, in a pool. And he's trying to get his toddler to swim for the first time. And, and the father's in the pool, and there's steps in the pool, and the toddler takes two steps in. And he's like, alright, I'm here. I'm here. You come, come get me. And the father's like, no, 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 I'm right here. He does that little thing where like, your hands are right here, and you take one step, and you like kind of you know, take a step back, right? And the toddler's like, hey, and he takes one more step. He's like, no, no, it's a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And then and, and the father's just walking in, trying to come to the father's hands. And before he knows it, he's in the deep end, and his, and his father's holding him. He's learning how to swim. That, that's what I see Jesus doing in our lives every day. It's what I see him doing in the Gospels to everyone he encounters. When you encounter God, there's going to be a challenge involved. And the challenge is a great thing. It's not a challenge. It's not. It's, it's not a. Um, it, it's hard, but ultimately, it's a good thing. So all of us in this room, when, 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 if we want to encounter God, if we want to have a face-to-face interaction and 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 grow in intimacy with the God of the universe, it's going to come with a challenge. 
That's the, the next point is it's pushing us deeper. We're taking a step of faith. Ultimately, what's happening in this passage in verse 4 is he's calling Peter to a small step of faith. It's small. He's not asking Peter to walk on water yet, right? That comes maybe a little bit later. This is a small step. It's like, Peter, are you just going to let down your nets? If anything, it seems maybe a little silly, right? Why, why would I do that? I'm going to take a small little aside. So it's just a small little, uh, uh, what's it called? You know, side, side sermon. Um, <laughs> shouldn't this be a, a mark of our discipleship relationships? If we can view Jesus and the life that he lived when he walked this earth and imported it to his disciples, if we see a pattern of, of healthy, constructive, edifying challenges, should that be in our discipleship relationships? What I mean by discipleship, okay, is another thing that is, is um, what we are passionate about here at Hill of you. Discipleship relationships are where you have someone who may be a couple steps ahead of you in life either by age, or maybe just life experiences, or spiritual maturity, you know, they've known Christ longer. You have one person that's just maybe a few steps ahead who is pouring into and investing into someone who is a few steps behind. And they're looking at their life and they're supporting, they're giving wisdom, they're sharing their experiences, they're, they're praying for that person. And it doesn't have to be a, a necessarily a hierarchy, it can be, it can be peers. Um, but. But we have a biblical structure that we, we have to follow, and honestly, New Life loves. Like, we are all about it. We are all about discipleship. We're all about having someone else that's going to be invested in your life, that's going to be knowing your struggles and praying for you. They're, they're you know, ready to, to receive you when you're crying and when you're broken, and ready to, to give you encouragement in those moments. That's discipleship. That's going to be a, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Just if, you, uh, become, if you get into the New Life body, that's, that's just one of the benefits that we are absolutely going to try to see, uh, see through for everyone. Anyway, so that, that small aside, does that make sense? Like, uh, this is, we, our discipleship relationships that we have throughout our life should probably involve challenges, right? That should, I mean, that should, that should, be, that should be in there. Um, maybe maybe we're, being, uh, we're being a little bit soft because uh, we're not necessarily following Jesus' example if, that's, if, that, if we're not doing that. All right, anyway. Um, so moving on. So why is, why is this a step of faith for Peter? Okay, let's try to put ourselves in Peter's shoes really quick. All right, I'm a sinful dude, right? I, if I put myself in Jesus' or in, in Peter's uh, shoes, I think I might put my sassy pants on. All right, <laughs> because try try to think about Peter's position really quick. All right, Peter is a professional fisherman. He does this every day. All right, he gets up and he goes in the night and he throws out his nets. He's been doing this for years. He has a business. He has, he's just, you know, James and John, they're like business partners. That's what's happening. So if I were Peter, I might put some sassy pants on. I'm like, Jesus, listen, I don't, I don't know you yet, but this is pretty foolish. Like, have you ever had a time where someone's trying to tell you how to do your job and you, they don't really know what they're talking about? Because <laughs> that's such a bad thing of mine. Sometimes that happens at work with me, and it's just so hard to just be patient with it. You know, but what, maybe it's not, not a job, which is a project, or maybe it's a hobby of yours that you just know a lot about. And someone comes in, they're trying to look over your shoulder and like trying to give you some advice, trying to tell you what to do. And it's, oh man, right? That's just, that's just not, that's not a good feeling. So that's, that's where this step of faith is coming in. It's a step of faith because Peter has a lot of excuses that he can give right now. He can look at Jesus, he can say, Jesus, thank you for your opinion. I mean, that was good teaching. You're on my boat. Thank, I heard your words. Thank you. But I'm a professional. I, I do, I've been doing this for my entire life. Also, um, I've been doing this all night. But let's, let's look really quickly at uh, five. Yeah, and Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. Okay, so that's, that's the excuse number two we can lay out, right? It's like... I, I, this is, I do this every night, and tonight's not the night. Today's not the day. If I know where the fish are at, I'll try again tomorrow. I, I tried all night, and I took nothing. Also, you're a carpenter. <laughs> By the way, just a little, just a little side. All the men, and at the very least, like, Jesus, we just cleaned our nets. For goodness <laughs> sakes, I just got done cleaning all my nets. I'm not going to throw them all back in. I don't know if that's important, but I mean, it's in there. So I imagine clean nets is the thing you got to, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's a priority. But uh, <laughs> like, he, he can throw that, I mean, he can throw all of those excuses 
is in there, right? So, I mean, so we have to understand what's happening. What's happening is a step of faith. Jesus, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, the, the backstory of this is Jesus has done already some big things in Peter's life. So it's not just like a stranger. Um, Peter, or, um, Jesus has already healed Peter's mother-in-law. Um, Jesus, he, he, he'd already, they've already been listening to his teaching. Um, and we know that when Jesus spoke, um, you know, kind of like hashtag Jesus problems, I like to say, is when Jesus speaks, he just creates a mob. So like hashtag Jesus problems is he can't go anywhere without hundreds of people crowding around him. So he, has to, he actually has 100 people pressing in. He has to get on Simon's boat just to get away so he can speak. So I say that to say, like, well, I mean, Peter's had some interactions with Jesus. He's heard some, some truth, so maybe that kind of caught him. But ultimately, it's a step of faith. Are you going to follow? Are you going to let your, your nets down? Peter, um, Peter knew the odds of catching fish. Okay, so the second point um, right before this is an encounter with Jesus typically involves high desperation or low probability. I did just like kind of tweak a word there, but um, an encounter with, uh, encounter with Jesus typically involves high desperation or low probability. When you look through the Old through, you look through the New Testament, you're going to see these patterns. Christ loves to be in the moments that are very, very desperate. Those times where you know someone has died. Or they're on their last string, or they're uh, they're lame and they can't they can't walk. Um, they like the story is just really quick. Like La the Lazarus is just a good example of this. If you guys know the story of Lazarus, Lazarus was a very very close friend of Jesus, and Lazarus is, is sick, and, he, and Jesus actually gets word, um, and Jesus doesn't go right away, and Lazarus actually dies, and he still gets word because he has some people that believe like Jesus. He died. I, I think you know, I, I believe you can raise him. Jesus still isn't coming. He waits three days, I think, three or four. And then he goes to Lazarus and performs a miracle and raises from the dead. And my point there is that Jesus loves like, for situations to get desperate. And we're going to talk about why. Just a little bit later, we'll talk about why. But for now, let's just understand that in your life, in an encounter with God is very likely to come in the desperate times in the hard times, when you are just completely burdened, when, when schoolwork is just overwhelming you, when you just overcome with, you know, with relationship you know, issues, and you're struggling, you just broke up with someone, or you, maybe you, you're just struggling with a sin, you're just broken with conviction, or maybe a family member, maybe your family member's dying, maybe someone's sick, maybe it's just these moments of desperation. Historically, when we study the Bible, those are the situations that Jesus, where you are likely to encounter Jesus Christ. And the other, the other side of that is low probability. Jesus loves being stacked against the odds. Uh, he would be a master uh, horse, horse bet racer, right? Uh, he loves when the odds get stacked up against him. And again, we're going to talk about why just in a few seconds, okay? But it's important also to understand that if, when, when the times that seem most improbable and most impossible in your life, those are the best opportunities to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And it comes back to these steps of faith. These steps of faith. That's what we're talking about this morning. So, that, so an encounter with Jesus typically involves high desperation, low probability. And that again is in 5 5, right? Um, he's, Peter is saying, We toiled all night and took nothing. Basically, Peter is saying, like, This is hopeless. We're not going to catch any fish, all right? For all those reasons already listed, uh, this, this is very this is, this is almost impossible. I, I, there's, there's no hope that this is going to actually work, right? Um, and then the, the final blank that's in your bulletin: these, these situations require faith. These situations require faith. Okay. So I believe there that this is a cycle that we will find with an encounter with Jesus Christ. If you are following Him or wherever you are, even if you're not following Him. Usually there's going to be some type of challenge. And very often there's going to be moments of desperation or moments where all the odds that the likelihood of success seems almost impossible. And that's where you encounter him. And the, and the question then is, why? Why is that the case? Okay, this is my opinion. I want to say that up front. This is my personal opinion. I believe the reason why 
is because those are the circumstances, is your final point there, those are the circumstances where God is most glorified. Those are the circumstances where God is most glorified. I don't know, if maybe you guys have already felt a little uncomfortable. It'd be great if you, if you, if you did. It's like, um, it's, I, I want to be really careful because I do not want to be preaching a man-centered gospel this morning. What I mean by that, okay, is I mean, I don't want to be preaching a gospel that is centered around our happiness and our satisfaction. And let me explain to you, let me explain what the danger is, okay? Well, when we talk about these first two points, the point of this is not seeking these challenges, seeking these steps of faith so that we can get rewarded by blessings, that, that God would bless our steps of faith. That is not the point. Okay, so I would just be a mess if, if I gave that tone this morning. That, that the reason that we come to God for things, and the reason that we make steps of faith, and the reason that we, we step out and we follow Him, is for the benefits that it gives us. That's very dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. The truth is that these situations bring glory to God. And God knows this. God knows that this is true. Seeing God move, this is your next point, seeing God move faithfully only increases worship. It only increases worship. God knows that if you live a life with a safe and comfortable family, and you grow up and go to a safe and comfortable school, and then you pick a safe and comfortable major, and then you, then you, to, so you can get a comfortable career, so that you can have a comfortable salary that is safe, that you know that you can provide for your own needs, that, that is safe, that you can take care of yourself, and then you can take care of your family and your kids, and it's comfortable and safe, and then you can move into retirement, and you can live a life that you can just enjoy life because it's comfortable and safe because you've been, you've been building up a whole way your whole life. And then you can pass on your, your, your legacy and your wealth to your kids, God knows how dangerous that life is. God knows that when we have that, those steps in our life, that we are going to begin to think that we don't need Him. He, he knows that. He knows that if we had our entire life, life laid out before us by our own hands, that we built our own houses, and, and built our own careers from the bottom up and earned it all. We know that we're, we are not going to worship God. God. God knows that. He knows our hearts better than we do. And he knows how dangerous it is for, that, for, that to, for us to pursue that life and just to walk through that. You know, so we, I mean, we might have a rhetorical question in our, in our minds like, man, I wish, it, I wish it didn't have to be that way. I wish that situation didn't have to be. I mean, why can't God just work it out, you know? But for, for, for good, why can't he just, you know, bless everyone? Why can't he make it happy, you know? And here's the thing. God's saying the same thing. God's saying the same thing. It's like, I wish I didn't have to, to give, put you in these situations. Because I wish that you would just turn and worship me for the blessing that I give you every day. I, I wish that you would worship me because you wake up with breath in your lungs. And I, I wish that you would worship me because you have food on the table. You have a great family. You have a great education. You're at Ohio State. You're moving towards a great career. Like God, I mean, he, God would love if we had hearts that were, that were not easily corrupted and that we would turn to him and worship him in those moments. That's just not the truth. That's just not the truth. So the reason why I believe that, that we are likely to encounter God in these moments is because God knows that it's going to lead us into deeper worship. Let me tell you a quick story, all right? The last summer, um, Tara and I went to an orphanage down in Mexico in, around June. When we got back from that trip, um, we thought that God was, uh, was telling us to lead a trip for new life um, that, that following year. And we, we just, we felt pretty certain on that. Like, we felt that that was, that we, we felt that we could hear God do it, that's what he was saying. There were a lot of challenges with that, right? Challenge. God encountering is going to be a challenge. Some of the challenges were, if we were going to lead the trip, um, if we had to move it closer, we had to move it to Christmas break, which is a big problem, right? Because those trips require a lot of planning. 
It requires a lot of recruiting. You gotta, you gotta raise a lot of money. And right, right from the very, you know, right when the gun was off from the, from the gate, we knew that we'd be behind the, we'd be behind the eight ball if we really wanted to pursue this and jump on it. Because we knew, like this, you know, it, it's kind of like today, we'd be saying, hey guys, by the way, we're leaving in a few months to go to Mexico. Anybody want to come? By the way, it's a couple thousand dollars. You know, we need your check by October. Uh, like it, it was difficult, right? It was challenging. And, and also, there, there's a whole other level as well, because we didn't want to step on toes. Another, another challenge was there were other people that were really passionate about the same orphanage that had led a trip in the past. And for us to kind of come in and say, hey, we really want to do this, it was, it was very difficult, because deep down in Terranine's in our heart, we, we did not want to feel like we were coming in and strong arming or, or coming in and just ripping anything out of anybody's hands. And it, it was a challenge. And here then we had, we had a, an opportunity for a step of faith. It's like, are we going to, to pursue this or not? Okay? And it didn't get easier, okay? So we get, uh, um, I, I don't know to the extent that some of the people, I mean, there's, there's people who went to the trip last year that are in this room. I don't really accept you guys understand this, but. Um, so we, we, we took a step of faith, we communicated, um, and all, all the stuff was running smoothly. Um, and we were fast forward to maybe around the time where it was ready to purchase tickets around the October. And I'm going online, um, and by this point, at this point we have like 10 or 12 people that are like on board already. And we, we grew to like 16, I think. But we had 10 or 12 people already like that are raising money. And I go to buy, I'm going to, to research tickets. There's not a single ticket leaving from the United States of America going to the city or any city close to where we wanted to go for the week that we wanted to go down there. Like, try to put yourself in my shoes at that point. I felt like an idiot. I had come in and I said, guys, we're going to leave this trip to Mexico. It's going to be great. Rah, rah, rah. You want to come? I'm looking at people in the face like, you want to come with me? Great. We're going to December. All right. Let's, let's do fundraising. Let's, let's you know, do these events get some money raised. And at this moment, I was so desperate. I was terrified and humiliated. At least I, I, was, I was facing potential humiliation. Because I, what, what, I was in a position where I was worried I was going to have to put my tail between my legs, go back to everyone and say, my bad, <laughs> trips off. Like, it, it's, not, it's not possible. And believe me, I exhausted all options. Like, I'm, we're like, Tara and I are spending hours and hours on websites trying to find plane tickets. And uh, I mean, in, in hindsight, you would think that, you know, earthly, it's, it's, it's kind of foolish to think that it would be easy to find plane tickets out of the country the day after Christmas, right? <laughs> that's just, that just makes, makes me look silly even saying that. But that, that's the problem we were at. And it was a terrible couple of days. High desperation in my heart and very low probability of success. The stage is set, right? The stage is set for an encounter with Jesus Christ. A couple days later, uh, through just, I don't even understand, I don't still understand how I fully got connected, but I got connected with a company whose sole purpose, a job, was to help mission trips get off the ground and plan the logistical <coughs> travel. Like, these people existed to book tickets for large groups of people that were trying to travel out of the country for missions. And somehow I got connected with these people, and within maybe just two or three days, they were able, through their inroads, they were able to find the tickets that we needed to be able to book them, but just like maybe a couple days later. Amazing, right? Absolutely incredible. Jesus let the situation get to the moment of complete desperation for me. He, he let me see that there's no possible way that my hands will get this done. And then he stepped in and said, Boom, here's your tickets. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> here's the deal, right? Here's the deal. I was led to worship. What's the, I mean, what's the first thing that Tara and I are going to do? We're going to get on our knees and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. It led me straight to worship. That's why it had to happen that way. Because if I were able to find the tickets, I'm doing this for right here, right? I'm like, yeah, guys, don't worry. I figured it out. We got 12 tickets. We're going this day. All right? But because the way it happened, I was led to worship the Father. My Father, my Creator, my Savior, Jesus. There's a pattern. And, and also, like, you know, and now and I, was, I was even excited to share this story. Because 
Even this morning, I'm getting excited because I'm thinking, man, I get to I get to boast about God more time in front of you guys. So you can hear the story. You can see how God works. But here's the encouragement. He's going to do the same thing in your life. He, he's, he's going to do the same thing in your life. There's a cycle that we have to put, we have to understand that the biblical, that, that the Bible shows us. Following Christ comes with challenges. He's going to push you. He's going wherever you are. He's not going to let you be comfortable there. Unless, I mean, unless you turn around and ignore him, obviously. But, but he's going to be challenging you to take one more step. And that's going to be a step of faith. Right? So that's, a, you know, that's kind of the next step in the cycle. You're going to have a step of faith. And then maybe, if you're lucky, he might bring you into a place of high desperation and low probability. And then he's going to come through. And ultimately, his faithfulness will lead you to worship. That's the beauty of the God we serve. You know? And then you're going to look back, kind of like what I was saying in the beginning, right? You're going to, you're going to look back and say, man, I'm so glad I did that. All right, I'm so glad I decided to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go fishing with my, with my father-in-law. I'm going to look back and be like, that was, that, was a good, that, was good, that was a good decision. And uh, that's, that's, how, that's how it works. And you're going to grow in intimacy with God. So without any further ado, we have to talk about application. Right, I think I told you all the points, right? The, that very last blank is seeing God uh, move faithfully only increases worship. You didn't get that early. It only increases worship when we have this cycle. So, but here, here's, here's where the rubber meets the road, okay? This is all just knowledge. It's all nice. This is all just studying the Bible, but are we going to apply this to our life? The question that we have to ask is this semester, what are your steps of faith going to be? This semester, what are your steps of faith going to be? It could be, it could be so many different things. And remember that, 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 that walking with God, I mean, another thing you know, is passionate about, that, that, this, that Christianity is not necessarily a religion as much as it is a relationship. Walking with God is a, a gradient. So you might be in this room way over here where, where you don't know God personally. The same thing applies. He's going to challenge you, small step of faith. For Peter, right, it was just throwing the nets on the boat. That's not pretty risky. You get your nets dirty again, right? In fact, it's, not, it's a small sort of thing. Or you might be over here, and he might actually be calling you to bigger things. He might be calling you to, to, to big sacrifices. But either way, it's going to be the same. It's, it's, it's are you, God, Christ is going to challenge you if you want to follow him. And then... Um, and then you're thinking that he's going to present a step of faith or he might, you might see a step of faith in your personal life. So just think about right now. Um, think about some things that might be in your life that could be an opportunity for you to take a step of faith this semester, this school year. You know, really quick, I, I feel like I want to share this too. Like, if, if you struggle with apathy in your personal life and in, in relation with God, maybe you've grown up and you've been, you know, around church for a long time, and that apathy is something you struggle with. Perhaps, I'm not saying this is a true diagnosis, but I would say biblically this could, it could, could definitely be a reason. Perhaps you've never taken those steps of faith where God moves in and shows himself and proves himself faithful and leads you into deeper worship. Because as a Christian, you can also, we can also leave, we can also um, live safe, comfortable lives where we don't, we're not desperate, we're no, there's no lot of low probability. And the, the detriment to our faith and our, our hope and our purpose, the detriment of that is we don't see God move in rest ways. So maybe you struggle with apathy because you are never taking those steps of faith. Jesus is constantly challenging. I can promise you that. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict. So that's happening. But maybe you're just ignoring it and you're not taking small steps, steps of faith that make you a little bit uncomfortable. That, that push you out of your comfort zone, puts yourself out there, it's vulnerable, it, it maybe uh, shows your weaknesses out in public. If you're not doing that, maybe, maybe that's part of the reason why you struggle with wholehearted worship with, with Jesus Christ, your Savior. So the question, question for you, to everyone to think about, this is practical, this is really practical. Um, what are, um, sorry, I lost my voice in here. So that first question, what steps of faith are you going to take this semester? Let me give you some examples. Have you guys ever tried you know, fasting? It's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. We're going to talk about it eventually this semester, about maybe what it kind of looks like. 
maybe a small step of faith is for you maybe to introduce a new spiritual discipline. For example, fasting. What if it means reaching out to a friend? We all have relationships in this room, right? We all have friends. Maybe, maybe your step of faith is reaching out. Maybe it's like having an a, a intentional conversation. And again, it's, it's a gradient, guys. Don't, you don't have to be too intimidated. It's a gradient. Maybe on, on, for some of you, it's just like sneaking the word God is in a sentence. You know, like, oh, I go, I give you like God's of this. You know, it's like a small step of faith, right? But maybe it's for maybe for some of us, it's you need to challenge yourself to share the gospel with one of your friends. It can, it can, it's, it's all along that line. It's just, it's just taking steps of faith. That is what happens because it's a snowball rolling downhill. You take one small step of faith. God proves, proves himself faithful. Faithful. Wow. Worship. Another step of faith. You're deeper in now. Bigger. Then he proves himself faithful. Wow. I'm worship. Deeper worship. You're just growing in intimacy with God. That's what happens. So what is your small step going to be this semester? So maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's just having a intentional conversation. Maybe it's sharing the gospel. Maybe it's just talking to a stranger. You know, just putting yourself out there. I have thousands of stories. I'm an introvert at heart. I don't know if that, I mean, it probably doesn't come across right now, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm severely introverted. So me, like, me just, like, striking up in social environments, like, it's, 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 it drains me. Um, but maybe, maybe a step of faith is just talking to a stranger. Maybe it's going on a mission trip. hey Right? We're going to Kenya, and we're going to Peru. In this next new year, so be thinking about that. We got you have time now. Like maybe your step of faith is pushing yourself and going to Kenya for a week, or going to Peru for a, a week and a half. Right? Just just think about that. Maybe that's yours. Maybe that's your step. We have a advance coming Woo! up. Woo! <laughs> Several weeks. An advance is a play on words. We <laughs> retreat. But with new life, we don't retreat. Right? We advance. <laughs> All right, so that's a little play on words. We have a retreat basically coming up in seven weeks. Maybe your step of faith is to sign up. This is probably not happening yet, but we're going to have a sign up sheet somewhere. So <laughs> hopefully, somebody make that happen. We'll have a sign up sheet for in advance. Uh, because it's that important. It's, it's only like you know, a few weeks, like a month away, maybe. And it's just a weekend. It's just a weekend where you come get away with us as, us as a body seeking Christ. We're still going to be talking about this kind of encounter idea. I mean, maybe that's your step of faith. Because you could have you could have excuses. Oh, I, I don't. It's awkward. I don't know people. Oh, I don't have homework. You know, a lot, a lot of stuff. It's real. But maybe that's a step of faith for you. Anyway, I'm gonna quit rambling. Um, that that's that's the the challenge I have for you. Is what are your steps of faith that you are going to take this semester? Really think about this, because understand that you are talking about intimacy. This question you're talking about intimacy with God. Because your steps of faith will grow you in greater intimacy with your Creator, with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Lord of this earth. It's, it's going to happen. Um, yeah, the second question as well is, is there, stretch yourself, how are you going to pursue situations where you're relying on God? All right, so I'm going to close uh, with prayer. We're going to have a couple more songs. Uh, we're gonna, the first song we're going to sing is, is, this, is Oceans. Uh, I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's been a popular song for the last year or two. It's, it's painting this picture. Oceans is saying, Draw me deeper than my feet will ever wander. And this, this picture of ocean is what's, what's happening is the songs are saying, I want to take a step of faith, knowing that you might sweep me, sweep me away into the ocean, into the vast ocean of your, of your greatness and your holiness. Um, and, and that's kind of what, you know, that's what we're going to be singing just right after this. Um, really quick, go ahead and take your cards out, your bulletin, and put your name on it, at least. And put, um, we'd love to have a phone number. Or email address if you prefer that. Um, we do not spam. We do not, we do not bug you. Um, we're basically just going to give you an update of stuff that's coming up. You know, like we'll say, hey, you know, we have capture the flag, or hey, we're playing, you know, nine square or something. Um, and uh, and the, and also, you can write your prayer requests on the back, and the staff will pray for you this week. Whatever you want. Maybe you want to write down a couple of your steps that you're going to challenge yourself this semester. Because, again, if you don't do it now, you, this is just going to fade to the back of your memory. You're not going to do it, and, and, and your, 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 your relationship with God could, could be in your life. So just write your steps of faith you know, you're gonna, right, that you're going to do on the back of your card. Listen to prayer requests, and, um, and we'll, uh, we'll worship uh, for the rest of the morning. Uh, I'll pray for us. Father, God, you are good. God, I can tell so many stories in my life where you put me in those situations that I could, I was hopeless. 
that I could not do. I was exhausted and I was terrified. And you came in and you proved yourself faithful. And God, I know so true. I, 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 just, I know in my heart, just from what you have shown me, that, that when I take steps of faith, the outcome is just greater worship of you. And God, we know that you are wise. And we know that you work things sovereignly. We know that's not always easy. We know that sometimes you, you take us to hard places, dark places. Um, but God, you are faithful. Um, we pray that you would just keep this, keep our challenges on our mind. Don't let school distract us from the things that we want to, to do for you. The steps of faith that we want to take for you, God. And God, for I pray for everyone here, no matter where they might be in, the, in this room, wherever they might be in relation to you, God, that you, that they would encounter Father, we just pray this all in Jesus.